Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Manhal Abuslam. I have pleasure to present for you a very interesting subject in the control field. Mm, what is this subject which is very interesting and in particular in the control practice? In fact, the subject is the transformation of a discrete time controller into a code in a microcontroller. Okay. In order to be more clear, let me take the following closed loop, where we have a physical system with an actuator and a sensor. And essentially, we also have the controller, which is in our case, a transfer function in a discrete time. Okay. Since the controller is in a discrete time, so the control input U here is a digital signal. But you know, the actuator receives only an analog signal. That's why we have put here this converter, digital to analog converter, DAC, which will convert the digital signal into an analog signal to be applied to the actuator. Then according to this analog signal U, which is in general involved, the actuator applies a physical quantity to the system, such as a force in a Newton, for example. For the sensor, as you know, it measures a physical quantity and gives this measurement as an analog signal which is in general involved. Okay, now, since the controller is in a discrete time, so the input of the controller has to be a digital signal. So these two signals have to be digital signals. As you know that the output of the sensor is an analog signal and the reference signal is an analog signal. That's why we have put here this converter, analog to digital converter, ADC, in order to convert this analog signal to a digital signal. And that's why we have put here another converter in order to convert this analog signal into this digital signal. Okay. Now suppose that you have a microcontroller where in this microcontroller we have the converters ADC and DAC and a part in which we can write down our code which can be programmed in the language C or C++ or any other programmation language. Okay? Now suppose that in using this microcontroller you want to make a closed loop for the system in open loop, which has the input U and the output Y. In fact, quite simply, you can inject in the microcontroller the reference signal and the signal Y, where these two analog signals can be converted by the converter ADC into digital signals, where this two digital signals can be used as a digital values for our code. Hmm. Now the question is how to apply the transfer function in our code so that the code can calculate the control input U, which is a digital signal, then can be converted by the converter DAC into an analog signal to be applied to the actuator in order to control the system. Firstly, we can calculate the value of error in our code because we have the values for reference and for y where the error is equal to reference minus y. Now what we are looking for is how to use the transfer function in our code in order to calculate the control input u. Hmm. 
In fact, we have to know that in microcontroller, we haven't, in general, the library that allow us to use directly a transfer function in our code. Hmm. So, how we can solve this problem? Okay. In fact, the idea is to translate this transfer function to recurrence equations, which can be easily programmed in our code in order to calculate the control input u from the values of error. For this recurrence equations, we can have a single equation, or two equations, or three equations, and so on. In fact, the number of recurrence equations depends on the transfer function, as you will see soon. Okay, now maybe there are some who don't know what a recurrence equation means. Uh, that's true that we will seek soon in this question, but I can give you just an idea about it. And we can take this quick example with a single equation in considering the simple time t. Okay, now what does this equation mean? In fact, this equation can be translated as follows. In considering the simple time t, the control input u at the time t, I mean the control input at the current time, it's equal to the control input at the time t minus t, I mean the control input at the previous time, plus two times error at the time t, I mean the error at the current time. I repeat, the control input u at the current time is equal to the control input at the previous time plus two times error at the current time. As we will see that we have to define the initial conditions. And for this quick example, we can consider this initial condition where at time zero, we have the value zero for the control input u. In order to understand better this recurrence equation, let me give you this table. Well, what I will show you that how the microcontroller calculate the control input u for each time interval t. Okay, let's start with the time t, where our current time now is t. Suppose that the reference at this current time is equal to 1, and suppose that the sensor at this current time gave the value 0 for y, so the error at this current time is equal to 1, because 1 minus 0 is equal to 1. Now, how the microcontroller calculate the control input u at this current time t? In fact, we have to take our recurrence equation. In order to calculate the control input u at our current time, we have to know the value of the error at our current time and the value of the control input u at the previous time. In fact, we have already the value of the error at our current time, which is equal to 1. But what is the value of the control input u at the previous time? Hmm, you know that our current time t is equal to t, so t minus t is equal to 0. So the control input u at the previous time correspond to the control input u at the time 0. In order to know the value of the control input u at the time 0, we have to take our initial condition that tells us that at time 0, the value of the control input u is equal to 0. Now, in using our recurrence equation, we can calculate the control input u at our current time t. So 0 plus 2 times 1, that's equal to 2. Now we can take the next time, 2t, 2 times t, where our current time is 2 times t. 
Now suppose that the reference at this current time is equal to 1 and the sensor at this current time gave the value 3 for y so the error at this current time is equal to negative 2 because 1 minus 3 is equal to negative 2 uh, Now in order to calculate the control input u at this current time we have to take again our recurrence equation where the error at our current time is equal to negative 2 and the control input u at the previous time is equal to 2 in using our recurrence equation we can find that the value of u at this current time is equal to negative 2 then we can do the same calculation for the next time and so on okay I think you can understand now what recurrence equation mean now I come back to our problem how to translate our transfer function to recurrence equations maybe there are some who think that this transformation isn't difficult perhaps maybe this transformation isn't very difficult but believe me that 99% of people don't do it properly why because because as you will see soon that this transformation like erode fall of holes and many people don't pay attention to this holes anyway don't worry we are here to learn you how to avoid this holes and how to make this transformation properly in fact in order to avoid any problem and to do this transformation properly I propose some procedure with five steps in fact the procedure I propose is an extract of my experience while teaching this subject in the French University uh, and believe me that uh, this subject isn't treated correctly uh, in the universities or in the books so I hope that the procedure I propose will be interesting for your control practice okay I will stop here for this video and I ask you please uh, to wait for the new videos where I will explain in details the steps of the procedure and please don't forget to subscribe to my channel that we support the channel and will allow you to not miss any video I upload soon thanks for your attention merci